Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics podcast. I'm your host, Fern Banatine. You can reach me on Twitter at at FBanaty, that's at F-B-A-N-N-A-T-Y. And I thought today, since we're uh, fairly early in June and we're wrapping up OTAs, we have training camp and preseason coming up over the next few months, so I thought it would be a fun exercise at this point to uh, give you give you guys a 53-man roster projection for this upcoming season. It might be fun to look back on August 31st on Final Cut Day to see if uh, we were accurate Obviously, there's a lot can happen from now until then with injuries, uh, more signings. Uh, and, of course, we'll see how the rookie, rookie class performs going forward. Uh, but I'll give you guys my take, and y- you guys can comment and see if you agree with me or not. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go position by position, starting with the offense and then the defense, and give you a little synopsis of what I think the where the position battles might be in terms of players that are uh, on the cusp of making the team and those who uh, will make the team. So I'll start with quarterback, and it all starts with uh, Josh Allen, who, of course, is a lock to make the team and be the team's starter, barring injury. Uh, so we won't spend too much time on Josh Allen. Uh, the backup role uh, looks like Matt Barkley's firmly entrenched as the backup. I say it's, he's a virtual lock to make the team. I won't say he's an absolute lock, only because uh, we saw last year with uh, A.J. McCarron coming in and struggling through the preseason and end up getting traded to the Oakland Raiders last year. Uh, but suffice to say, I think Barkley will make the team, uh, especially considering the leadership role he brings and as he is a bit of a mentor for Josh Allen. And in particular, after we lost Derek Anderson to retirement, I think the coaching staff will really want Matt Barkley on the team to uh, provide some stability for Josh Allen. So the third quarterback spot is where it gets interesting. Uh, I struggled with this one. This is probably one of the toughest decisions uh, with Tyree Jackson. Uh, there's a lot of reasons or indicators why he would make the team. Uh, first of all, it's, it was good to have three quarterbacks in this league. Uh, it just as an insurance policy. You never know what could happen. Second of all, uh, Tyree Jackson's a very talented uh, football player. Lots of raw talent. He's got a great arm. Uh, he's a good athlete. Uh, you, you don't want to risk losing a, a player like this if you do see some potential there. Uh, you know, if you put him on the practice squad, there's always a chance that he gets snagged away. And, of course, the third reason you might want to keep him is if you if you foresee uh, using him in a variety of roles, maybe on special teams or on some gimmick plays. I haven't seen any indication that that will be the case yet, uh, but it's a possibility. Uh, but in this roster projection, he does get cut and he doesn't make the team. The reports from OTA seem to indicate that he is still very raw as a quarterback at this stage in his development. Uh, fear of losing him, if we try to stash him on the practice squad, uh, there's a possibility, but we have to remember that he did go undrafted, so 32 teams passed on him uh, quite a few times over uh, over the course of the NFL draft. And all in all, I, I decided to leave him off the roster and try to stash him on the practice squad because uh, there are a few other guys that I, I want on the roster for special teams at a few other positions that uh, offer a little more special teams experience. So we'll move on to the running back position. Uh, it's a crowded group here. We start at the top. We have our, our virtual locks again with LaShawn McCoy and Frank Gore. There's obviously still a, a small possibility that uh, the team moves on from McCoy, given that Frank Gore's on the team and they did draft Devin Singletary, uh, given his big contract, and he is up there in years. But in my scenario here, uh, McCoy does make the roster, and he's a good candidate for a bounce-back year as well, uh, despite his age. I think he was suffering with hamstring injuries last year and much better offensive line, of course, this year to run behind. And then we have Frank Gore. I think the biggest risk with Gore here is uh, that he suddenly retires. Uh, he is 36 years old and showing no signs of slowing down just yet, but you never know at that age. It could happen. So after these two veterans, we have Devlin Singletary, who is going to make the team in this scenario. Given that he was a third-round draft pick, uh, he did sh- he did demonstrate some really real great cutting ability at OTAs. And it's a really good situation for him to come in here, uh, not have to be the lead cow, lead bell cow and learn behind LaShawn McCoy and Frank Gore. Uh, I do think we'll keep a fourth running back as well. The candidates are TJ Yeldon, Cenaris Perry, and Marcus Murphy, uh, last year's uh, preseason star. There's also Christian Wade, the former rugby, rugby player who the Bills signed through the 
uh, International Players Pathway Program. I would say uh, Wade has long odds to make the team and his best bet is to uh, stick around on the practice squad. So I do cut Marcus Murphy here too. Uh, just given that uh, he's such a poor pass blocker compared to the other running backs he's competing with. He did show some talent as a running back last year, but he struggled with blocking. And uh, we brought in TJ Yeldon, who is a much better blocker and pass catcher at this point in his career. So I don't think the, the Bills will keep Marcus Murphy around. He'd be, he'd be a pretty a solid practice squad candidate as well, though. So the battle for the last running back spot would be down to seniors Perry and TJ Yeldon. And I think they'll keep Yeldon here. Uh, he's a much better talent as a running back if you if you do have injuries, if you do want to use him in that scenario. Uh, pretty good pass catcher as well. He's one of those guys that does everything well enough. It doesn't do anything great. Now, Senior is Perry has been a pretty good special teams contributor throughout his career in the NFL. But I think given that Yeldon is a, more of an offensive threat, he'll make the team as the fourth running back. I also think uh, fullback Patrick DeMarco makes the team. I think there's still a roster spot for him. Coaching staff really likes him. He's a team leader. He still has a very reasonable salary. So we keep DeMarco in those four running backs. And we're up to seven players on the team so far. Two quarterbacks, uh, four running backs, and a fullback. Now moving on to the wide receiver position. Uh, I talked a little bit about the wide receiver position in last week's podcast. Uh, but I'll just reiterate that. We have our three locks at the top of the position in Robert Foster, Zay Jones, and John Brown. The uh, fourth receiver would be Cole Beasley, who's uh, another one of those uh, virtual locks to make the team. And then it gets interesting. Uh, we have a really big size receiver in Duke Williams, who I talked a little bit about last show, but uh, I think he offers something very unique that a lot of the other receivers don't have. He's more of a big possession type X receiver. Uh, it was pointed out to me that Robert Foster and David Sills are actually pretty two pretty big guys. So is Zay Jones, but I don't see them in the same role as Duke Williams. I think that's where that's where he stands out, and I think that's where he, he earns an, a roster spot. Now, behind these five receivers, we have Andre Roberts, uh, Ray Ray McLeod, Isaiah McKenzie, David Sills, Damari Scott, Victor Bolden, Cam Phillips, Nick Eastley, all battling for one or two uh, roster spots. First and foremost, I'm going to give Andre Roberts a nod here. Uh, the coaching, the front office clearly brought him in because he's uh, they like his special teams ability. He was uh, uh, one of the better kick returners in the league last year. He, of course, torched the Bills in that one game late against the Jets. Um, so Andre Roberts makes the team. And that leaves one a possibility of uh, one other receiver if we do keep seven receivers. Um, last week's episode, I only I talked about on, that's only keeping six receivers. But uh, reevaluating the whole roster, I think we do keep a seventh receiver. And a guy I really like, and I, I really do hope he makes the team because he showed some excitement last year especially in the second half of the year, is Isaiah McKenzie. He's obviously not the biggest guy out there. Uh, he, d- he did have some fumbling problems early in his career with Denver Broncos. Uh, some of his, uh, some of what he brings to the table would be mitigated uh, with Andre Roberts coming in because McKenzie did, did provide uh, some kick returning duties for us last year. But I really like the, the, the way that uh, Brian Dable uh, integrated McKenzie into the office. He, he got creative with him and used him in a variety of different ways. He was almost like a, a Swiss Army knife out there for Dable. And I want to see how that continues. So so we'll keep seven receivers in this scenario. Okay, moving on. Now, tight end is another uh, crowded group. Well, we have Tyler Croft, of course, who we brought in in the offseason. Jason Kroom, who showed some chops as a pass catcher last year. Dawson Knox, another uh, third-round draft pick who uh, made some highlight reel plays in OTAs by a few accounts. Tommy Sweeney, the Boston College tight end, we drafted in the seventh round. And Lee Smith, uh, who we brought in for a second stint with the Bills, uh, particularly for his uh, exceptional blocking abilities. Now, in this scenario, I'm going to assume that Tyler Croft starts starts the season on the physically unable to perform list. Uh, Then we start with Jason Kroom, who... Uh, again, uh, showed some talent as a pass catcher last year, and I think it's going to be fun to watch him develop this year. I think Lee Smith makes the team as well. He's such a dynamic blocker, and he, he's the best blocker on the team, one of the best in the league, and that's kind of what you want from your number two tight end. And then the third tight end spot would go to Dawson Knox. Uh, obviously, you take a guy in the third round with as much talent as, as he has. Uh, you're, uh, it's very likely that he makes the team. He's a super talented guy who is underutilized in, in college at Ole Miss. Uh, so those are the three tight ends we, we keep uh, starting the season. Jason Kroom, Lee Smith, and Dawson Knox. 
And now on to what I consider our most intriguing position in terms of battles, uh, given all the free agents we brought in and the drafting of Cody Ford. It's our offensive line. There's a lot of bodies to sort through here. Uh, we have Dan Dawkins, Quinton Spain, uh, Mitch Morse, Cody Ford, Tyne Yusecki, Spencer Long, uh, Adrian Waddle, Russell Bodine, Wyatt Teller, Jeremiah Searles, Connor McDermott, Vlad Ducasse, John Feliciano, Ike Bokter, and Garrett McGinn. Uh, we'll start with what I think will be the probable starting five going into the season. Uh, Deion Dawkins at left tackle, uh, Quinton Spain at left guard, Mitch Morse at center, Spencer Long at right t- guard, and Cody Ford at right tackle. After those five, I think Ty Niseki is a virtual lock to make the roster as well, um, in the least as a swing tackle, and potentially he might win one of those starting tackle pos- positions. I think John Feliciano makes the team as well. He'll be the top backup interior lineman. He offers some versatility, and he's a guy that was a little unheralded early in his career, but I, th- I think he will compete for a starting spot at one of the guard positions, and in, in this scenario, he's our top, top interior backup. Now, I think... Uh, Wyatt Teller showed enough last year to, to bring back for another season. He's shown that he's already a pretty advanced uh, passing blocker, and uh, his run blocking needs some work. But in this scenario, uh, he's relegated back to a backup role, but he makes the roster. I think we keep a ninth offensive lineman as well, uh, just given the talent that we have at the position. I think let Adrian Waddle makes the team. He'll be the fourth tackle, coming on maybe some jumbo looks. Our offensive line coach, Bobby Johnson, is familiar with uh, Waddle. Uh, so I think they brought him in here with with a plan to to have him make the team. So that's our offense. Now we move to the defense. Uh, we'll start with the defensive line. I think defensive tackle is probably the easiest position to select. Uh, I think we have the our four guys pretty pretty much entrenched to make the roster. That's Ed Oliver, Star Latulule, Jordan Phillips, who we saw into a one year kind of prove it deal, and Harrison Phillips, who's going into his second year and. Uh, will likely continue to develop at least into a, a solid rotational lineman. At defensive end, our starters are firmly entrenched. We have Jerry Hughes and Trent Murphy. Jerry Hughes coming off his uh, new t- two-year contract extension. Uh, behind those two players, we have Shaq Lawson, Eddie Yarbrough, uh, rookie Daryl Johnson, uh, Mike Love, and Latarius Walton. Uh, so in this scenario, I actually will have us only keeping two backup defensive ends. I think Shaq, Shaq Lawson's a pretty good bet to make the team. And what might be his final year with the Bills, but this is going to be a big year for him to display to the rest of the league that he deserves a, a nice new contract. Then I'm going to go with Eddie Yarbrough for the fourth defensive end spot. I uh, know there, there are a few decent candidates. Daryl Johnson, I think, is just just a bit too raw at this phase uh, in his development. I think he's a guy that will very likely keep on the practice squad. Uh, Yarbrough just just shows enough to to continue to occupy one of those backup defensive end positions. I think. So then we move on to linebacker. Again, we have the f- starters firmly entrenched and Tremaine Edmonds in the middle, Matt Milano on the weak side, and Lorenzo Alexander as the strong side starting linebacker. Amongst the backups, we have uh, Corey Thompson, Julian Stanford, uh, Ricky Voson Joseph, the fifth round pick, Dion Lacey, Eli Harold, who can play defensive end as well, and Mo Alexander, who also uh, offers versatility. He can play safety as well. So first off, I think Julian Stanford makes the team. Uh, He's a guy the coaching staff trusts. He was the top backup linebacker last year. Uh, Voshan Joseph should make the team as well as a fifth-round pick, a guy that we want to develop, and perhaps he'll take over uh, for uh, Lorenzo Alexander at strong-sided linebacker after the season. Uh, I think we keep uh, Eli Harold as well. Again, he can uh, play uh, with his hand in the dirt. He's had some success in the league rush in the passer previously. And I think he'll be uh, Lorenzo Alexander's top backup this season. I think we'll keep a seventh linebacker as well. I have us keeping Dion Lacey. Uh, he played 299 special team snap last year, and that'll probably be his role going going into the season again this year. He's probably not a guy you ever want to see taking defensive snaps, uh, but he does have an important special teams role. Now moving to the secondary. We'll start with cornerback. Another position where there's going to be a lot of competitions. There's some pretty... Pretty good experienced bodies back there and some good young players as well. I believe our three starters are going to be Tredavious White, of course. Uh, Levi Wallace, who demonstrated that he could hold his own in the league uh, late last year when thrust into the starting role. And of course, Teron Johnson, our starting nickel cornerback, who as a rookie last year, I think exceeded most of our expectations. 
Uh, behind these starters, of course, we have EJ Gaines, uh, Kevin Johnson, Lafayette Pitts, uh, Ryan Lewis, Cam Lewis, Denzel Rice, and potentially Saran, Saran Neal, uh, depending on where you want to use him, whether it's safety or cornerback. Uh, so in this scenario, I actually only have us keeping two additional cornerbacks. And I think they'll be the veterans, uh, providing that they stay healthy, and Kevin Johnson and EJ Gaines, uh, both fully capable of stepping into the starting position. Uh, Gaines has some valuable special teams experience. So the un- unfortunate cut in this scenario would be Lafayette Pitts, who's made the team the last few seasons as a key special teams contributor. But you can't keep everybody, I guess. Now at safety, uh, obviously we have our, our two very solid, well-entrenched starters in Mika Hyde and Jordan Poye. And then uh, it's another crowded position behind these two. Uh, uh, a lot of depth at safety as well. Of course, we mentioned Mo, Mo Alexander, who can play linebacker as well. We have Raphael Bush, uh, rookie Jaquan Johnson, uh, Saran Neal, who we mentioned earlier. And of course, Dean Marlowe, who uh, seems to follow Sean McDermott around in his NFL career. Uh, so I think we're only going to keep two additional uh, safeties. It's kind of been the MO of this organization the last few years. I think a few years back, we only actually had one one backup safety on the roster, if I'm not mistaken. I think Mo Alexander is a good enough football player to make this team. Also pretty versatile, of course. As we mentioned, he can play linebacker. Uh, he's had some success as a starter in the NFL before. Uh, seems to have the makeup to be a good special teams contributor. And then as a fourth linebacker, I, I think we keep Raphael Bush again. He's a guy that can come in. He, he was the backup slot cornerback last season. Another guy who's uh, ha- had some fair success over the course of his NFL career. And he was a fairly solid special teams contributor last season, uh, logging 146 fe- special teams snaps. So that's our starting offense and starting defense. We'll quickly go over special teams. I don't think there'll be any big surprises. Stephen Hoschka uh, entrenched as our kicker. Reed Ferguson as our long snapper. Uh, where it gets interesting is the punter position, where uh, it's pretty frightful, actually. It's probably our worst position on the whole roster right now. Uh, it's between Corey Barocres and Corey Carter. I'm going to go with Corey Barocres again this year. He did struggle last year, obviously. Uh, had a few botched snaps. But I frankly just don't know enough about Corey Carter to think that he'll win a starting job over Corey Barocres at this point. Uh, punter is a position where I think there's a, a good chance that we bring in another body, or at least I hope that we do scour free agency for an upgrade at the position because it's a very important position and we can't have what happened last year happen again this year, especially if we are aiming to make the playoffs this season. So there you have it, a 53-man roster projection here in June. Uh, So let's summarize what the 53-man roster looks like. We keep two quarterbacks in Josh Allen and Matt Barkley, uh, four running backs in LaShawn McCoy, Frank Gore, TJ Yeldon, and Devin Singletary, uh, one fullback in Patrick DeMarco, three tight ends, and Jason Kroom, Lee Smith, and Dawson Knox. Seven receivers and Cole Beasley, John Brown, Robert Foster, Zay Jones, Duke Williams, Andre Roberts, and Isaiah McKenzie. Nine offensive linemen. And we have Deion Dawkins, Quinton Spain, Mitch Morse, Spencer Long, Cody Ford, Ty Nusecki, Adrian Waddle, John Feliciano, and Wyatt Teller. We have four defensive tackles in Ed Oliver, Star Latulale, Jordan Phillips, and Harrison Phillips. Four defensive ends in Jerry Hughes, Trent Murphy, Eddie Yarbrough, and Shaq Lawson. And we keep seven linebackers, Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, Lorenzo Alexander, Vashawn Joseph, Eli Harold, Julian Stanford, and Dion Lacey as a core special teamer. And in the secondary, we have Tredavious White, Levi Wallace, Teron Johnson, Kevin Johnson, and EJ Gaines. At safety, we have our starters and Mika Hyde and Jordan Poirier. And backing them up will be Raphael Bush and Mo Alexander. Our, our special teams kicking team will be uh, Reed Ferguson as long snapper, Stephen Hoshka, and Corey Barocres as our kicker and punter, respectively. Now, you may have noticed a fairly interesting scenario where we, we cut our last three uh, drafted rookies and Jaquan Johnson, Daryl Johnson, and Tommy Sweeney, but that just goes to show you about the the, the depth of this team. Uh, given all the free agent signings, we have a lot of competition all across the roster, almost every position, and there's going to be some tough cuts this year. Uh, I went with a few guys who I just feel that have demonstrated that they do have NFL caliber ability. Jaquan Johnson was a particularly tough cut. I think he 
probably going to be a good special teamer in the least in the NFL. Uh, but he's not the biggest guy, and he's not the fastest guy. And I uh, really wanted to keep that extra receiver, so uh, had to sacrifice a secondary player. And it turned out to be uh, Jaquan Johnson here, which is a bit unfortunate because he's a guy you kind of cheer for. So that's going to wrap up today's show. But as always, you can find me on Twitter. You can you'll find the podcast on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or uh, have anything to say about my 53-man roster projection, uh, go for it and we'll have a nice healthy debate. So until next week, I'm signing off. Have a good week, everybody.